Hello children, I am Mushkeen, your English teacher and I welcome all of you to this session. Children, we live in a society full of diversity. We have people who think differently. We have people who behave differently. I mean differently as in like they don't think like me. I, I live in a society, you live in a society, we don't think alike. We don't behave alike. We are different. That is why we are referred to as individuals. Children, these individuals, they make a society. But then, in this society, there are people who are overly critical. They show no respect at all for the person whom they criticize. They don't care how that person feels. They don't care what effect our criticism or their criticism will have on their minds, on their hearts. Children, actually criticism, it scars the mind and the heart. It becomes very difficult for the person whom we criticize overly criticize without considering his or her respect. It becomes difficult for that person to bear with that hurt. You know children, wh what are these people called? Can you guess it children? Absolutely. They are called judgmental people. These are people who judge others. They judge others for many reasons, children. Maybe because of their pride, maybe because of their hurt, or because of their prejudices. But whenever they do so, they hardly care about others whom they judge. They do not bother how this person will feel. Judging? Why do people judge? Because they fail to understand. They do not understand. Others, their situations, where they are coming from. No, they are so engrossed in their uh, uh, ego, in their pride, in their hate, in their hurt, that they do not consider others. They are not empathetic children. They lack empathy. It's very important for us children to understand empathy. Until unless we do not have empathy, I don't think so. We ought to be called as humans. What makes us humans is empathy. For everything around us, not only for our fellow beings. We are going to discuss today is based on the real experience of the author. In her elementary school, what she witnessed was that a girl was discriminated by some fellow students. And this thing, it had created that everlasting memory in the mind of the author who somehow felt, had felt bad about it. And this writer, she was a librarian. She wasn't a writer before. She was a librarian. But she got tuberculosis. She was bedridden. And what she started doing was, since she was librarian children, she would be interested in books. She would be interested in literature. So what she started doing is, she started writing her experiences. And she didn't know that her experiences, whatever she was writing down, would turn into famous children books. This story discusses the racial discrimination that a girl faces in her school by her fellow students. It's actually 
the real experience of the writer, as I already told you children. She has witnessed this in her school. So she wrote it and it became famous as a children's story, as a story for children. Now the hundred dresses is the title of the story. You know children, why this title? This is very, very important, but we'll come to that later once we finish uh, with the story. So children, this story discusses, it highlights the very important aspect that we have in our society, that we all face. What is that? Discrimination, children. Bias, prejudice, hate, pride, ego, all these things. See, these things, these emotions are in us. And in one way or the other, we become overly critical towards other people without considering where they are coming from, how they will feel. We don't bother. Isn't it, children? We all do this. So 100 dresses discusses something which is quite similar to it. The main characters of this story are Wanda Pratronsky, Maddie, and Peggy. These are three girls, but when we say the protagonist, children, I want you to decide who is the protagonist amongst these three characters. So what do we have in the story? We have a school and then there is this Peggy and uh, Maddie, they are friends. Peggy, she belongs to a rich family. Maddie, she is not that rich. And since Peggy is rich, she has lots and lots of dresses that she wears to school. And Maddie, since she is her friend, it happens that um, Peggy, she gives her used dress to Maddie. She alters them and then she wears the same dresses to school so that others wouldn't identify, oh, these are the dresses from Peggy. But to remain in that kind of status quo, children, she also changes her dresses whenever she comes to school. So this is kind of, you can say, uh, Maddie and Peggy. Peggy, that rich and that kind of, you can understand that uh, having an upper hand over Maddie. Maddie somehow at the back of her mind would have this thing, see, I am not that rich. I cannot lose the favors that Peggy gives, that Peggy gives me because I'm her friend. So I cannot afford to annoy her. So she often follows her footsteps. What Peggy is doing, Maddie, she has to be a yes man to that. Then one day what happens, we have this girl, Wanda Petronsiki. She comes to school. Children, this is the girl who wears same blue frock, blue dress to the school. Though it is neat, it's clean, but it has lost its shine. It has lost its newness. As a result, everybody in the school, they would get it, oh my God, uh, she is not wearing different dresses to school. She wears that same dress. So she is not rich. She is not rich. Now children, she is in the class of, class as in classroom I mean, of Wanda uh, Petronsky is in the classroom of Peggy and Maddie. Peggy, that rich girl, she has an upper hand. And she often bullies other children, other classmates. When this girl comes to the class, she is wearing this blue dress. She says that her name is Wanda Petronsky. She becomes the target. Four, one, having an awkward kind of a name, Petronsky. Two, for wearing the same blue dress. And now, this Peggy 
God. She, she is not leaving a chance of bullying her. So every time she asks her, how many dresses do you have? Why is she asking this question, children? Because this girl is wearing just a single blue dress to school. Though it is neat, it is clean, it's iron, it's bang on. But it's not new. And why is she asking her, how many dresses do you have? Because she wears a new dress to school every day. So she bullies her. So what is the reaction of this girl, Vanda Petronsky? She would often tell her, I have 100 dresses. Now title children, the 100 dresses. This is from where the title comes. So she tells, she replies to Peggy and Maddie, and Maddie, both of them. I have 100 dresses. And then when uh, she tells them that I have 100 dresses, they then ask, where do we have those 100 dresses? Why don't you wear them to school? Why do you wear this blue dress to school? So she becomes a target. She becomes a target. And it hurts her to the extent that she stops going to school. Before that, there was a competition in school, as we have in our school as well, different competitions. So for boys, it was motor boat competition. And for girls, it was drawing competition. Vanda Petronsky had participated in this competition. And now when she was not present, when she had been absent for many days, the results were out. The results of the competition were out. And it was surprising for everybody that she had won. She had won. What had she drawn in that competition? She had drawn all the hundred dresses. Children, the title. Therefore, the title is very, very apt. The title of the story, The Hundred Dresses, is very apt. Why? Because all these hundred dresses, they were here in Vanda Petronsky, in her mind. So she drew all of them and she was a winner. But at the same time, her teacher, Ms. Mason, she receives a letter from Wanda's father. In this letter, Wanda's father, his hurt is quite evident. He mentions this in his letter that they have moved to a big city where, children, where Vanda would not be laughed at her name because of her name. She would not be discriminated being different. As soon as the teacher, she reads out the letter, Mary and Peggy, they have this realization that, oh, they have done something wrong, something really wrong. But Maddie, she is feeling more guilty. Why is she feeling guilty, children? Because somehow she never wanted to bully Vanda. But she could not afford to lose Peggy. If she would not have fallen in her footsteps, Peggy would not have been friends anymore with her and she could not afford to lose all her favors. So she would be a yes man to her. So she would do whatever Peggy would do. She would do the same. So children, Maddie, she is feeling very, very guilty. She can relate to it. See, I have done wrong. I should have spoken up. I should have stopped Peggy. See, Peggy, we are doing wrong. We should not have done this. We should not do this. But now, it's too late. Is it, children? They think it's too late. It's too late. Why? Because Vanda, she is not around. She is not there. So, they decide to make amends. They go, they look for her wherever, where they lived. 
but they are not there. And what they decide, they write a letter wherein they hope to make amends. They write a letter to Vanda. And they are quite surprised when Vanda agrees. Children, by this we understand that Vanda, she has received their letter, she has read it, she has forgiven them, and she has replied back to them, telling them, okay, it's okay with me, so you, we, we are friends now. So children, the story is quite simple. We have uh, three girls, one girl, she is not um, same as the others are there. And she is being bullied for being different, be it in appearance, be it in um, the way she uh, wears her dress or whatever. So the hundred dress, it's a timeless story, timeless story about the hurt that is inflicted upon. How do we inflict this hurt children? By teasing people. And you know the pain, painful uh, consequences of this uh, teasing people, bullying them, judging them. This we, the bystanders, they cannot um, actually understand those consequences because they fail to act courageously. This story is, it's, it's partnered with message. What is the message children? That we must be considerate enough. We must not be judgmental children. It's better to understand other than judging others. Because any kind of discrimination, any kind of, uh, you can say, bias, any kind of bullying, it does torture the person whom we are judging. It does torture and they suffer silently as Vanda was suffering. She couldn't then bear her, the bullying of Peggy and Maddie. And that is why she stopped going to school. They realized it, definitely they realized it, but it was too late when Vanda had left the school. So children, we must not be biased and judgmental. Rather, we must be considerate enough and we must be empathetic towards others. I hope I am clear. Thank you very much and see you again.